Hello, I'm Mike Russell from MusicRadioCreative.com. In this video, we're looking at the multi-track clip section of the Preferences menu in Adobe Audition. Now, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to like this one. Also, subscribe and ding the bell so you never miss another video from me. Here I am in the multi-track because this section is all about the Preferences section multi-track clips here. Now, to bring this up really quickly, it's Control or Command if you're on a Mac and the comma key. And you'll see here multi-track clips and we've got lots of different stuff to get through. So let's start with synchronized clips with Waveform Editor. It is good, in my opinion, to keep that ticked as when you bring something into the multi-track, let's bring some audio in, and you zoom in, say, to the 14 second point like that, when I double click and go to waveform, it's zoomed in and at the 14 second point. Again, if I zoom out and I go over to the 30 second point and double click, it's now zoomed out and at the 30 second point. If I change this behavior, go into multi-track clips and untick that option, when I go into multi-track, it doesn't matter where I zoom to, the six second point, and place my cursor, when I double click, it does not happen in the waveform view. It retains whatever you were doing in waveform. So if I'm zoomed in and highlighted there, it's not going to automatically do it in the multi-track. So it unlinks that behavior. So usually I like that ticked. Use embedded timecode when inserting clips into the multi-track. Now you only need to worry about this if you're using BWF or XM files uh, with timecode information embedded. If you're using that stuff, particularly if you're working with video, uh, you will know exactly what that means and it will just embed everything into the correct place in a multi-track. Uh, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really use that uh, and you'll know if you do need that. But usually, you should leave it ticked. Automatically crossfade overlapping clips. Well, you definitely want this as when you're editing a podcast, for instance, here in the multi-track and you overlay those clips, you'll see these yellow lines indicate a crossfade. So instead of just a, a hard cut, you get a crossfade between the tracks. So I can make an edit here and that will fade out this track and fade in this separate track. If I go in and disable that, of course, next time I go to make some edits, like an edit here, and I try to overlap these tracks, no crossfading occurs here, as did there before, okay? So back and definitely you want to have that one enabled. Bring clips to the front when selecting them. Okay, when I select that, whenever I select a clip, look, it brings it to the front. It pops it to the front. That is not default behavior, and I quite like it like that. So untick. Now when I select a clip, see the rest of the clip underneath is not popping to the front. It's underneath and you can't see it. Uh, so again, I just leave that as it is unticked. Scale waveform when adjusting clip gain. Definitely you want this ticked. What that means is when you're adjusting the clip gain using, and let me zoom right in so you can see it, this little icon down here, it's at the bottom of every clip, when I adjust the gain, it makes the waveform bigger or smaller. You definitely want this if you're importing low volume audio and you want to make it bigger. It's nice to be able to see the waveform that you're working with inside the multi-track. If you do not have that ticked, uh, then whenever you move that, it will change the volume, but it won't scale the waveform. So definitely go ahead and make sure that's ticked. Now, when you're inserting multiple clips, do you want them all on the same track or all on their own track? I usually say all on the same track, and the reason for that is simply I import a lot of sound effects uh, from my media browser or music beds and bits like that. So say I went in here and I went into sound effects and I brought in loads of BP sound effects. Let's grab a ton of them here and they'll all come in onto one track, my sound effects track. That's handy for me. But sometimes you're importing a podcast with multiple tracks and you want them on different tracks. You choose the other behavior. You can always change this, by the way, by dragging and before you drop, hold down the Alt or Option key of your Mac and you see now it's dropping them onto separate tracks. So it really does depend what you prefer. Uh, but in my case, I'm ticking the first option, add all selected files to the same track. And the first time you drag multiple tracks into the multi-track, it's going to ask you anyway which behavior you'd like, but you can always change it here in preferences. And then when inserting multiple audio channels, add them all to the same clip or distribute them across multiple clips. So what this means is if you have something recorded in 5.1 surround, look at this, uh, with a left, a right, uh, and all the other bits uh, that go with surround sound, uh, by default, when you drag this in, it's just going to go onto one track in the multi-track. You can change the behavior either in the preferences menu or by holding down alt or option and boom, it'll start inserting everything on its own separate track. So it really depends uh, what's best for your own use case there. 
And then finally, default clip stretch mode is real time. That is when you're stretching out clips, uh, time stretching them. So if I take this sound effect, let's actually solo this track. And what you need to do is have this option, toggle global clip stretching uh, enabled. And then you get these white triangles here. And when I pull that out and stretch it by 800%, it does a real time render. It takes no time at all to stretch that clip. Whereas if I go back in and switch on rendered high quality, it's going to be a higher quality stretch, but it's going to take longer to do it. So let's do this on another clip here, stretch it out and you see it's taking longer to process that stretch. So generally I tend to leave that on the real time as I like to work fast in the multi-track and really I don't think the difference is that significant. If you want to learn even more about Adobe Audition, I highly encourage you to go and check out my courses at mrc.fm forward slash learn. That is mrc.fm forward slash learn. And if you need any help with the multi-track clips section of the preferences menu, let me know in the comments down below. Music Real